Hello guys, I'm back from another video and today we're talking about what if Bell was overpowered as hell. So, in the last video we talked about how, so after the, you know, time where Bell and also a random Loki familiar member, aka, you know, Dan Belladonna basically defeated a large Hydra which seems to have the ability to control other monsters, they were called by Loki because of a certain issue. Apparently, there's been this, you know, um, city that's been attacked by the Black Dragon for about a week now. And after Bell, you know, um, was told about this, he was told that he's gonna be a part of this mission. After Bell was told of this, he would also be given some of the information about this city. And apparently the reason why that Loki wants to, you know, protect this city is because this city produces pretty good alcohol. Bell would just look at her and he would just say, Oh, I guess that's why you, but like you decided to just try and save it. So yeah, so and apparently one of his, you know, um, companions in this, you know, mission is apparently Ryu, which after ex after like you know, um, you know, after Loki explains her whole backstory, well, Bell was a bit, you know, concerned, and also some of the, you know, Loki familiar members would start joking around, except for Eyes, for several reasons. Well, they would start joking around about, you know, Bell's crush on her, and also their little date last time. So, yeah, so, after a while of basically going through the, you know, um, some lower class cities, I guess you can say, they would make it towards the client city, aka, which I'm just gonna be calling the City of Wine for now. After arriving at the City of Wine, they would be introduced to the King, and I don't really have a name for him, so I'm just gonna be calling him the King. So, the King would basically explain that they're going to be taking down this, you know, monster, aka the Black Dragon, and they're gonna be having two people basically acting as, you know, guards, I guess you can say, because, well, he thinks that the Loki familia is quite a powerful familia, so why not? So, after being told of this, well, apparently both Ryu and, you know, um, Bell are going to be acting as, like, the watchdogs for now. So, after doing that, they would basically go to their, you know, reserved rooms, and, well, a bit of a misunderstanding basically happens, where when Bell was basically, you know, a bit tired and also forced to, you know, stay in the same rooms as, you know, Ryu, well, Bell's back would start to hurt as, you know, Ryu would basically ask if she, you know, if she can, you know, massage Bell's back. Bell would obviously refuse, saying that he's not really, you know, the type of person to basically get those types of massages, as she would basically force herself onto him. Not in that way, for God's sakes. Don't put your mind in the gutter, for God's sakes. Um, he would basically, you know, be forced to have this massage on, you know, um, this massage on him. Which, Izuki, not Izuki, I meant Bell, God damn it. Well, the counter is about to be... A skyrocketing, like skyrocketing in this video. If you don't know who was it, well, the counter thing. Well, check the guy in the comments putting all of those numbers. I mean, I love you, guy. I mean, it's kind of like motivation to basically fix my whole thing. Well, anyway, so let's go back to the actual like explanation about what happened last episode. Well, after Izuku got that massage, he would start to think that it was actually pretty good. Until, you know, Bet basically came in asking that Bell and also, you know, um, Ryu that it's finally time for them to have dinner. Well, he would see this and think that they're, you know, doing some, let's just say some inappropriate shit. So he would basically run away and basically told everybody about it. So after that, they would have dinner as everybody's basically snickering to themselves. And, you know, um, hmm, one of them specifically, you know, Eyes would obviously not, you know, laugh at him, thinking that it's actually, you know, kind of cute, as Bell was basically there, basically blushing, as Ryo would not care. So, after everybody was basically, you know, um, you know, a bit tired, they would basically go to sleep, as two of the members, specifically um, Eyes and Bet, are told to basically go guard the gates until it's Izuku, not Izuku, I meant Bell. Bell's and, you know, Ryo's turn. So, yeah. So, after that, Bell and Ryo would basically go to sleep in their separate beds. So, yeah. That is basically what happened last episode. And so, let's talk about what happens next. So, as both Bell and also, you know, 
well, Rio are basically sleeping, they will be awoken by some guards as Bell would say this. What the heck is going on? As one of the guards would say this. The Black Dragon, it's arrived. As Bell and also Rio would basically wake up, or basically be fully awoken, they would basically get ready their weapons and they basically wear their armor as they would start charging in at the, you know, um, castle gates or whatever you want to call it, or the city gates. So, when they arrived there, they would see the Black Dragon's silhouette. It's so pitch black, even the, you know, the stars in the sky would basically blocked out by its wings and, you know, body mass. As the dragon would have one black, not really black, more like one red glowing eye. As it seems to be glaring at Bell for some odd reason. Bell would basically ready his sword and his, you know, um, blade shield as he would start charging into battle. Bell would basically summon or create a dragon to... A dragon that's basically a fusion between a dragon and I guess you could say a harpy. I mean, it definitely has like, you know, I would imagine that it had like um, some almost female features. One of which it seems to be, well, a humanoid girlish body that literally has, you know, harpy wings and things of that nature. If you see like, you know, Damachi, I can't remember the name of that, you know, um, that of that um, particular like um, harpy, but... It was one of the, you know, Xenos, if you've forgotten, which, uh, let me, let you basically get it. So, the Xenos, or whatever you want to call it, uh, I meant, the dragon that he created would basically start flying him towards the dragon, as everybody would see the monster that he created, as one of them would say this. Specifically, one of the guards would say, um, what the heck did he just summon? As, you know, Rio would say this, oh, that's his special skill. Um, let's just say he's quite interesting. And that's why I kind of like him. As all of the guards would just look at her, as one of them would say this. So this elf does I do. As one of them would say this. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. That guy is kind of lucky. As one of them would say this. No kidding. I mean, she's got a fla- As one of them would get kicked in the balls by Ryu, as some of the guards would basically, you know, um, flinch, as, you know, Ryu would basically glare at them for basically telling her that, you know, she's- not well than doubt. <laughs> uh, all of the guards would say this. Noted. Try not to say that she's flat. <laughs> so, let's go back to Bell. So, Bell is basically, you know, using his, you know, dragon to basically fly him up towards the black dragon as the black dragon would shoot out pure, pure bright red flames at, you know, Bell and also his dragon. The dragon would be burned alive as Bell would basically create dragon-like wings to basically fight him. Bell and the dragon would clash as everybody would see the, the sounds of like metal basically um against like I guess you can say claws. I mean I could imagine like the black dragon having like you know metal-ish claws like every time when they slam into a person it kind of sounds like a knife or something. So they would basically fight as the dragon would almost somehow get the upper hand on Bell. Bell would basically trick it as Bell would basically shoot out a blast of magma from its face, or Bell's face in this case. Just imagine it like a Kainu. If you don't know, he's a admiral from you know One Piece. He had the magma magma no me or the magma magma fruit. So just imagine him using that. Um, he's able to shoot out blast of pure magma at the dragon as the dragon would be burned on one side of its face, showing bone. As everybody was just like impressed. They would hear stories about the Black Dragon having a super strong hide, and Bell basically destroyed it. Well, after all, this is going to be it. After all, this what if it's called What If Bell was overpowered as hell? So, Bell would basically start, you know, getting the upper hand on the Black Dragon as Bell would basically create a large Hydra from his back. As these Hydra like heads would basically start, you know, pinning the dragon down. As Bell would basically grab one of its skills, as Bell would basically throw it at one of his, you know, Hydra heads. When the dragon or the Hydra head would basically eat that scale, well, one of you commenters basically asked for Bell to basically eat one of the dragon's parts and gained its power. Well, yep, he basically get that dragon's power. So, Bell is ten times as stronger and now has the abilities of that dragon. So, Bell would shoot out 
the bright red flames, which I'm just going to be calling them hell flames, at the dragon, right, like, point-blank range, instantly, as Bell would shoot out the dragon, just, like, shouting at the dragon as flames, the hellfire would basically start burning the dragon, as the dragon would be in instant pain, as all of the, you know, um, guardsmen would basically say this, the dragon is weakened, as... All of them would basically start charging in as some of the Loki Familia members that are basically participating in this would basically just watch. Including Ryu, which she's basically like cheering for, you know, Bell. As one of them would basically say this, specifically, you know, Bet. <laughs> I think she's quite the keeper. As one of them would say this, yeah, no kidding, said Finn. As one of them would say this, specifically, you know, Tione. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Izuku's not Izuku, I meant Bell. I meant Bell, for God's sake. I meant Bell. Bell seems to have a keeper. As one of them would say this. No kidding. So, after, you know, the soldiers arrived, they would start wounding some of the parts of the dragon that literally had the burn marks from, you know, the hellfire. As the dragon would scream out, basically flailing, as Bell would say this. Now, this is your end, black dragon. As his arm would start transforming into the dragon-like arm, or the dragon head, similar to that one boss in, like, um, Elden Ring, I can't remember its name, but it literally had a dragon head as an arm. So, he would basically plunge that dragon's head, or armor, whatever you want to call it, into the dragon's neck, as it gorged a large, or basically, took off a large piece of the dragon, as Bell would get so many, you know, abilities from it after that. After a while of fighting, Bell would defeat the Black Dragon. Eyes would see this as Eyes was just like impressed. I mean, she wanted the Black Dragon to be destroyed, but she wanted to do it with her own hands. But either way, the Black Dragon has been defeated. The King would arrive as the King was riding on his, you know, noble steed, which is a pure white horse, clad it in gold armor, not you know, not actually gold armor, as in, you know, gold, you know, plated armor, because remember, gold is pretty weak as an armor, including weapons. And I'm not saying that because of, you know, Minecraft. So, after arriving there and seeing the Black Dragon defeated, everybody would celebrate, including the king would say this to Belle and the rest of the Loki Familia. Cheers to the Loki Familia! And for their victory against the Black Dragon, let us have a feast, a feast of defeating this monster. As everybody, or more specifically the, you know, villagers would basically come out as you would see the Black Dragon's corpse. As the Black Dragon would seem to be disintegrating, but leaving, well, the scales, bones, and I guess you could say some of the flesh, but it seems to leave out a large-ass monster core. Maybe about the same size as, like... Hmm. Maybe the same size as like a fully grown, you know, Minotaur. So, after Bell saw this, Bell would basically, you know, create several arms from his back, more specifically arms that resemble like a gigantic ass skeleton. He would basically, you know, grab the, you know, gigantic ass like, you know, monster core, as Bell would basically start carrying it towards, you know, the rest of his group. As all of them would say this. That monster core is massive, said one of them would more specifically, you know, um, Finn. As Finn would say, yeah, it's quite big. I wonder how much that costs. As he's basically, um, scratching the back of his, you know, um, I guess you can say chin, or stroking the, you know, the, you know, he's basically, like, stroking his, like, chin a little bit, basically thinking in his mind. As one of them would say this, specifically, you know, bet. I'm betting it's going to cost a lot. As he would basically start rubbing his, like, two hands together. As, you know, um... Wait for a second. As Ryu would say this. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. I definitely wonder how much that costs. And I wonder how much I can buy some stuff. She's basically wondering in her mind. As Bub would say this. Alright, guys. Uh, I think we're done with this city now. As one that would say this, yeah, but maybe we should have a bit of a, you know, um, fun time here. I mean, we're gonna be having a little festival after all. As Bell would say this, hmm, that, actually, yeah, why not? 
it couldn't hurt. So, as everybody would basically start going back into the city, as everybody's celebrating about the death of the Black Dragon, including Eyes, as Eyes would have a genuine smile on her face, except, like, instead of her usual, like, her usual, like, fake ones, well, her, well, smile is more genuine, as she's basically smiling because of the death of the Black Dragon. As, you know, the king of this, you know, um, you know, city would basically start, you know, celebrating with the rest of the Loki Familia and the villagers. They would basically have a massive party all night, as when it's finally morning, well, Belle is basically back at his, you know, room. Or his, you know, um, reserved room. As Belle would say this. Mm, ah, that party was... Ah. As Bell would basically start scratching the back of his head, like, the, scratching the back of his he head, as he would say this. Well, that felt painful. Mm, I think I might have had a hangover. As Bell would start, you know, um, you know, rubbing the back of his, you know, um, head as well. As Bell would feel something heavy on his, well, lower regions, his nether regions, if you want to call it that. As Bell would basically take off the, you know, blanket that he was covered in, as Bell would see, let's just say a beautiful sight, he would see a fully naked Ryu, happily contented while sleeping on, you know, Bell's thigh, and seems to be quite comfortable, comfortable as well, and she's, and she's somehow whispering, saying, Bell, can you please do that more? As Belle would basically start blushing even more, Belle would basically become a literal tomato. And Belle would basically go back onto his bed as he would faint after, you know, after the large nosebleed that he had seeing, you know, Ryu basically fully naked. So, a few hours have gone by as, you know, Belle would basically fully wake up as Belle would basically, you know, see that Ryu is no longer on his, you know, thigh. As Ryu would say this, Oh, you're finally awake, Belle. As Belle would say this, Oh, um, what the heck? As she would say this, yeah. Hm, that party was quite wild, don't you think? As Belle would say this, yeah, no kidding. As Belle would basically start to stretch, as she would say this. So, Belle, as Belle would look at her, as he would say this. What is that? Wait for a second... Sorry about that. So, after Belle looks at her, she would say this. So, Belle. As Belle would say this. What is it? As she would say this. Hmm. I wanted to ask you this. How do you feel about, well, marrying me? After Belle hears this, he would say this. W wait, marriage? What do you mean by that? As she would say this. Well, remember last night? As Belle would start to think a little bit. As... He would say this. Oh. Oh. As Belle would start blushing even more as he would remember last night's events. Including their whole lovemaking session. Including the whole way. If you don't know what the whole way means, well, just imagine. Actually, I'm not even going to say it because I might get banned off YouTube for life. So, after Belle remembers this, Belle would basically be... Well, well, just imagine his nose. But... The lower half of his nose, completely red, including his shirt. As she would say this, <laughs> you seem to be quite shy. As Belle would say this, yeah, but... Uh, as Belle was still blushing, as she would say this, Come on, Belle, do you want to marry me? As Belle would start looking at her, as Belle would start blushing even more, as Belle would say this, Um, uh, um, um... As Belle would basically start, you know, scratching the back of his, you know, neck, as he would say this. Um, sure, but maybe if we get older, at least. As she would say this. <laughs> that sounds nice, then. As Belle would basically look at her, as she would say this. Alright, Belle, we should probably get going, including changing your clothes. Besides, I'm, you know, looking at your... As she would basically point at his lower regions, as he would realize that he's not wearing underwear. Belle would basically, you know, cover his, you know, you know, his private parts as he would start to, you know, change his clothes. After changing his clothes, he would see the rest of the gang there. 
including Bet, which Bet is currently still, you know, kind of drunk, and Belle would notice that, you know, um, there's something on, you know, you know, Bet's face. And it's colored, well, let's just say something of a, you know, um, you know, every single color of the rainbow. Yes, he basically vomited. As one of them would say this, specifically, you know, um, Belle. Um, guys, what happened to Bet? As one of them would say this, specifically, you know, Finn. Well, Bet sort of, well, as one of them would say this, specifically, you know, um, Rivia. Yeah, he sort of vomited after the whole party. And it seemed that he sort of drank too much, and as Belle would say this, oh, God. As one of them would say this, said, you know, let's just say, um, eyes would say, all right, guys, let's start going now. As everybody would basically go onto the, you know, carriage, as the coachman would basically start, you know, um, bring up his whip, as he would tell the horses to basically start moving on. So they can finally leave to go back to Orario. So, when they arrive back at Orario, well, Orario has been, you know, not been changing a while, but more like, you know, how do I say this? Hmm, more like, you know, kind of different ever since the whole, you know, incident, let's just say that. So, after defeating the Black Dragon, they would be celebrated as heroes and pretty great ones at that. After all, the two other monsters are the two legendary monsters, which were, I think it was named Behemoth and also Leviathan, or am I wrong? I can't really remember, but after, you know, the, you know, the two original, like, two strongest, like, familias, the Hera and the Zeus familia, defeated those two monsters and couldn't defeat the Black Dragon, well, after seeing that, or at least hearing that the, you know, Loki familia defeated the Black Dragon, well, they were celebrated as heroes. So, Belle and the gang would basically go back to the, you know, Loki familia as, you know, Loki seems to be, you know, as typical, drunk. As Belle would basically say this to himself, Ugh, never changes. As Belle would basically tell everybody that he's going back into his room, and so Belle would basically go back to his room as he would basically start changing. So... After that, they would basically have a party celebrating that they have the most, you know, um, how do I say this? Hmm, I guess you can say popularity votes, I guess? Let's just say that. So, Belle would basically be at the party as some of the, you know, um, you know, some other, like, familias are there, including the, you know, Apollo familia. Which, the Apollo, like, the Apollo familia are basically, like, congratulating, you know, the Loki familia. As Belle is currently with, you know, um, you know, Ryu. As both them were basically just like chatting. As they would see that the night is almost over. As Belle would say this. So, um, Ryu. You said you wanted to marry me, right? As she would say this. Yeah. Why is that? As Belle would basically, you know, lead on, you know, basically go down on one knee. As Belle would basically bring up a little box. And let's just say they're a little bit older now. Um, Belle is currently, like, you know, um, about, um, 19 now. And for her, she's basically, like, 19 as well. But remember, she's an elf, so she's technically older. So, Belle would basically, you know, um, basically go down on one knee as he would grab a, you know, a black box from his, you know, inventory. Which is his, you know, um, system inventory or whatever. So... Belle would basically open this black box as he would bring out a ring with a golden gem on it. As Belle would say this, Ryu, will you marry me? He would basically smile as she would basically start crying. As she would say this, yes, Belle. She would basically, you know, grab Belle by the, you know, um... I guess you can say by the, you know, waist, as she would basically twirl him around, as both of them would kiss. When they did, well, the rest of the Loki familia would be there, as they would say this. Specifically, you know, Bet. Congratulations, Belle. As Belle would say this. When did you... As all of them would basically say this. Yeah, we sort of saw everything, said, you know, um, Finn. And one of them would say this, specifically, you know, um, Tione. 
<laughs> Lucky for you. As everybody would basically start celebrating for Belle's, you know, um, proposal. As everybody, or more specifically, um, you know, Belle and also, you know, um, you know, Ryu would basically go back into the, you know, parlor room. As everybody is basically, you know, congratulating them for their, you know, proposal. As the Apollo Familia would basically approve, and, um, I can't remember the name of that, you know, I, or at least I don't really know if there's an actual goddess or god that's literally tied to, like, marriages or something of that sort. So, just imagine a god that's basically, like, you know, a type of, like, marriage god. So, he would basically, you know, arrange the wedding, and so, this is going to be the end of this series. So, before you guys leave, let's talk about the... Epilogue. Uh, so, yeah, so, let's talk about that. So, Belle and also, you know, Ryu sort of got married, and Belle decided to retire, being a, you know, adventurer. They would have two kids, and two of these kids are obviously half-elves. And these half-elves are pretty powerful, each gaining the abilities of, you know, Belle and also Ryu. And even one of them, specifically a girl, Lily has the same skill as, you know, Bell, which is, I'm just gonna be calling the system. So, because of this, this girl became, you know, a pretty powerful adventurer. And so created a, like, a, you know, a lineage of powerful, you know, adventurers. And so, because of this, Bell was remembered as a powerful and really important figure in this universe. And as for, you know... Well, wait for a second. And as for Ryu, well, because she's basically an elf, and also, I don't even remember, I don't really remember if they're, you know, if they literally are immortal, or just, you know, have pretty long lifespans, but I would imagine that she would die a few years, or a few generations um, later, as she would be remembered as a pretty powerful, you know, familiar member. And quite an ally to the Loki Familia. As Loki would basically go to her, you know, tombstone with, you know, um, with the great, 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 actually multiple great grandson of, like, Belle and also Ryu. As he would basically bring out a urn. An urn of his, you know, first son and daughter. As Loki would say this. Hmm. <laughs> you certainly make your, you know great, 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 multiple great, um, grandfather and grandmother, you know, proud, eh? As he would say this, yeah, thank you, Miss Loki, as she would say this, anyway, we should probably go back to the familiar right now, as he would say this, yes, my goddess. So, this is going to be the end of this series, but I'm also going to be making a post about, you know, the next, you know, you know, what ifs. And some of these what-ifs, I didn't really make drawings yet, or concept art for them yet. So, I'm going to be asking you guys for some inspiration about them. If you vote on them, at least. So, yeah. So, this is going to be the end of this episode. Or, this series. So, yeah. So, I hope you like this series, and I hope you like this video. Comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.